We are going to talk about a person that we've never heard before. I've never heard of this man before. He sadly comes under one of the judges of Israel. And I say sadly because the story is very strange and sad and dark and cruel and it's a surprise to all of us why this is written in our Bible. But the good thing is, despite the, the ugliness of the story, God has not left. He is still involved, He can see, He can hear, and He has taken action. He repaid this ugly man, Abimelech, for the evil that he has done. And I wondered why, why is this story written? Why many things in my Bible are written and sometimes I don't make sense of it, but as you can see, the Bible clearly teaches that everything was written in the past, was written hmm, to teach us, to teach us. There's something for all of us to be warned about, something for all of us to learn about in life and about God. The story today is short, simple, focused, and it's centered in this city, the city of Shechem. And you can see there where it is. It's marked in red. It's in the heart of Israel. And uh, it is just to the west of um, uh, the Jordan River, where most of the tribes of Israel use it. That's the area that we're focused upon. There's some other cities that are, were men, are mentioned on the other slide, but don't mind. Let's just focus on Shechem for now. Abimelech had a father, and his father was Gideon. And it is very, very common for us to hear in today's world this saying, like father, like son. But really, is it true? Does this story teach this? Of course not. To raise a godly son, it takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of investment, a lot of heartache, a lot of prayers, a lot of knees going down. A lot of teaching, a lot of invest, finance, many things to bring a godly son in today's world. So you may think you're a great father and of course your son will be a great son. It doesn't happen that way. It's not like that. You have to work at it, other, otherwise it will be a problem. The story begins with Abimelech going to his own people. And as you know, he went to his mother's people. And the mother was a slave girl, or what the Bible calls a concubine. A woman that can spend a night or two with a man to give him company in certain times. And this woman was not a Jewish woman. She was not an Israelite. She was a Canaanite woman, a pagan woman. Abimelech, in his earthly wisdom, he chose to go to not his father's people, but he went to his mother's people, his uncles, as we heard. And he started to tell them, what is better for you? You can see him here speaking to them. What is better for you? To have all 70 of Gideon's sons rule over you, or just one man? And this particular man was a special man because he was their flesh, and their blood. Their flesh and their blood. And the idea seemed good to them. He was a wise man, he was a, a good speaker, good charismatic, good point, you know, it's nice to have family in leadership, at least when you have a problem, you can go to them and they will help save you and, and change things the way you like them to be. So they went to the people of Shechem and they told them, you know, this guy Abimelech, can take good care of us as our family, let us crown him. And in doing that, as you can see, they gave him money. They went to the temple of the pagan gods where they collect taxes and they took a bag of money. The Bible says it had 70 shekels of silver, a lot of money from the temple the pagan temple of Baal, and they gave it to Abimelech. 
What did Abimelech do? You would expect that he, as a good leader, is going to put this and invest the money in construction, in good laws, in judges, in hospitals, in streets. Rather, Abimelech took the money and hired the people to work for him. And the Bible specifically says that he hired reckless adventures, and these became his followers. Two things come to my mind. Number one, what are you doing with your money that you earn? Are you putting your money to good value? Are we putting our money to good use? Are we investing our money properly in the right way? What are you doing with the dollar in your bank? Do you make sure that it also serves to be part of God's glory? We will be asked for every dollar that we've been given. How we've spent it, why we've spent it, and for what. These are all assets. These are all little tokens, things that God has entrusted us to take care. Spend your money wisely and make sure that it goes to God's glory, not the community of evil. This man didn't do that. He took the money and he used it to hire reckless adventures. And we will see what happens after that. These reckless people became his friends. And I tell you, choose your friends carefully. Are your friends reckless adventurers? Are your friends crazy people? Are your friends godly people? Are they church going? Are they God fearing? Or are your friends people of the world? Choose your friends carefully and the people you hang around with. And the next slide maybe is the peak of the slide. He left Shechem, where his mother's people are, his uncles, and he went to Oprah. Do you remember Oprah? Who lives in Oprah? His father's people, where Gideon lived. Gideon lived in Oprah. And the Bible says in very one sentence, on one stone he murdered his seventy brothers on one stone. This desire, this wanting to be a leader, wanting to be in power has eaten him up. He was blind and to get to where he wanted, he killed all his family. What cruelty, what nasty, what ruthlessness did this man really have? Be careful of wanting of power. Be careful for the lust of power and glory and status it can kill. This man used his sword on one stone where he's sitting there. He killed 70 of his people. And this reminded me of what happened in my home country five, six years ago, where our people were murdered so that others can go into power. You want to be in power? You want to be big? You want to be important? You want to be the first? Listen to what Jesus says. Jesus says, if you want to become big, you must be the servant. And if you want to become first, you must be the slave of all. Jesus washed his disciples' feet. And he showed us how a real master should be. This is what we should follow as Christians. If we want to become great, be small. I will say that one more time. If you want to be master of all, be servant of all. And start with your family. Start with the people around you. Start with the people in your little family. Your spouse, your children, your uncles. The people around you, those are the ones you start to serve.
people will wonder what is evil and this is the real definition of the word evil evil is when everyone does what he likes righteousness is when everyone does what God wants that is the difference between both of them be careful about your heart be careful what likes and dislikes you have be careful about the heart because the thoughts come from the heart all the evil inside comes from the heart the Bible warns very carefully about this the Bible says Look at this slide. It is from within a person's heart that evil thoughts come out. This man, Abimelech, was what exactly Isaiah spoke of in his book. He said, people, their feet rush into sin. They are swift to shed innocent blood. They pursue evil schemes and acts of violence mark their ways. Thank God that none of you standing here or sitting in front of me are this kind of people. But there are many Abimelechs in today's world that are out there ready to kill and walk all over people around them to reach where they are. Be careful of the love and lust for power and for status. The Bible talks about the opposite of cruelty and ruthlessness. The Bible calls it kindness. Those who are kind benefit themselves. Solomon says, but the cruel begin on ruining themselves. In any event, this man Abimelech killed his brothers and they took him under that oak tree and they crowned him as king. And you think the story ends there, but it is not. One of the younger brothers, one of the 70, the youngest one, the smallest one, when he heard what his brother was doing, he escaped. And as you know quickly, he went onto that big mountain, mountain, or it's called Mount Gerizim. We've heard of this mountain. There's two mountains, and Shechem is in the plain in between. Mount Gerizim, and you remember the other mountain, Mount Ebal. And they were to pronounce curses and blessings from the two mountains. Those were the older days. And he told them this parable, and we talked in detail about the parable, right? He talk, told them about the parable. You know, there were trees, they wanted the olive tree to be their king, but the olive tree said, no, I have my good oil, leave me alone. Then they went to the fig tree, and the fig tree, come be our king. She said, no, I enjoy my fruit, it's good for the people. And then finally they went to the vine, and they said, oh vine, come be our king. And the vine said, no, I'm very happy with my wine and the sweetness, why should I be king over you? So the trees went to the thorn bush and told the thorn bush, this ugly, dry, short tree, to become their king. And after he said his parable, this young man, Jotham, ran away. He went and hid. What do I learn from this? I learned a couple of things. Number one, do not resist evil people. Yes, defend yourself. Yes, say your opinion. But do not go into war with evil people. Do not resist evil people. Actually, the Bible teaches against this. The Bible says, do not overcome evil by evil, but overcome evil by good. By doing good, our faith, our God, our Bible teaches us that if someone does you evil, do not repay him with evil. Although that's what you feel in your heart. You want to get back at them. But no, no. Just say, God, you take vengeance, I will repay this evil with goodness. And it's not easy to do that. That's number one, I learned from him. And number two, I love the fact that he ran away and he hid. Run away from evil. <clears throat> run away, run away. Don't fight, don't fight. If you see an evil situation, don't spend, dwell on it. Don't be part of it. Run away and move from it. And after this young brother Jotham 
said his things, he said an important verse. He said, listen to me, you people of Shechem, so that God may listen to you. Listen to me, people of Shechem, so that God may listen to you. Yes, when we listen to the cry of the poor people, God will listen to us when we cry. The book of Proverbs teaches that whoever shuts his ears to the cry of the oppressed, the cry of the poor, the cry of the needy, that you also will cry and will not be answered. Please do not turn someone in need. Listen to the cry of people around us. Don't ever turn your back on an orphan. Don't ever turn your back on a divorced man or woman. Don't ever turn your back on a widow. Help people that are weak. Jerusalem, my beloved, said his oracle and he ran away. And it sounds like and it looks like Abimelech was the king. And the Bible teaches us that he reigned for a period of three years. Year. Do you remember how long his father reigned? It was 40 years. 40 years of peace. Look at the comparison. Goodness of Gideon and the three years of this man Abimelech. Three years. Three years after he murdered his brothers, 70 of them, on one stone. Three years, how many months? 36 months. I don't want to go about the days. And the families of these murdered people were waiting for heaven to respond. Why does it take so long for God to hear? Is God here? Is God listening? Is He aware of what's happening? The Bible says, and I'm going to read this particular quote, important, after Abimelech had been the king, for three years, after three years, God finally did something. He stirred up animosity between Abimelech and the people of Shechem. And God, as we talked in the back room, can use good people and God can use evil people to His glory. God stirred up animosity between Abimelech and the people of Shechem. It's a strange spirit. God used that spirit to turn things around. And the Bible explains God's motive. God, this is so that the crime against the people of Gideon, those 70 people that were killed, will be avenged. The blood that was screaming for them will be avenged. Many times we think God is not around. Where are you in my problem? Why aren't you taking care of me? Why is this, these people are hurting me and you, God, have done nothing about it. But eventually, in the right time, in His time, even if it takes a month, even if your problem takes a year or two years or ten years, be sure that God will avenge you and God will take action. And it's all written and nothing is missed. God is aware of everything that's happening. And He knows the persecution of Christians around the world. And it may sound and look as if He is not keen or not interested, but He is paying attention. And in the right time, God will take the corrective action. He will avenge. In this particular story, it took three years. Sometimes it can take longer. Be patient. Wait for God's time. Don't do it yourself. Do not resist evil with evil. If someone has done you wrong, forgive them and let God deal with the problem. Not yours. Not yours. Do not avenge. And God may choose to wait. Be patient and wait on the Lord. Second or third character we heard of Abimelech, we heard of Jotham, his brother, the third man, Gal. We talked about Gal in the back room. He was a man who was all talk. He talked, he was hot air, just balloon, 
talk, 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 talk. Many people are like that. They, I love people in my profession that talk very little and do a lot. There are some people in our profession that don't say a word. They are very quiet. You don't even notice them. But when times come for action, they will roll their sleeves and they will put their hands and they will do the job. This man was not one of them. He was kind of a guy who talked a lot. Look what he said. Gal said, who is Abimel? And who is Shechem? Shoot, that we're subject to him. Why should we serve Abimelech? If I had the people under my command, I would get rid of him. Get rid of him. And you all know the story that when the right time came, he didn't get rid of him. He had poor plan, he had no army, there was no thinking about it. And it was all talk, 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 and no walk. He talked boastful. Gal was boastful, boastful, proud, arrogant, and boastful. Talking about me, myself, and I. And if I was in your shoe, I would change the organization. And if I was working this job, I would do a much better job than you. And if I were in your family, I would have dealt better with my husband and fixed things with my wife. And people talk, 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 and when the right time comes, they do nothing. And the people were divided. Some followed Abimelech and some followed Gal. And indeed, the words of Christ are true, where he said, every kingdom was divided on itself, will be ruled. Be careful, you spouses, you husbands and wives. Be careful, always be united. Do not be divided. Agree with one another or else the house will be ruined. Every household divided on itself will not stand. It's okay, you want to do something, your wife says no, wait. Wait until you both agree. It is all right if your husband wants to do something and you don't agree, just wait. Walk together, make that decision together. Not divided, together, together. And I will always stand and attest that every decision, everything me and Miriam have done together was blessed by God. Everything that we do in prayer, have agreed and did together happily, was blessed by God. So that's Gal talking boastfully. Do not bite one another. Gal was biting Abimelech and Abimelech was biting. The Bible teaches in the book of Galatians, if you bite and devour one another, both of you will be destroyed. If God sees his children biting and fighting together, both will be destroyed. Don't be proud, don't be arrogant, don't be boastful. The Bible teaches, this is what the Lord says about boastful people. Let not the wise boast of their wisdom, or the strong boast of their strength, or the rich boast of their riches. And that last part is important. Don't let the rich boast of their riches. Oh my God at the people that boast with what they have and their power and their finances and their connections and they rest and they put their trust in all of this it all goes to waste Gal was a man who talked a lot talk, 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 talk but no action like some of us the Bible says about talking let your words be yes yes and no, no Anything else is not good. <coughs> Learn from me, my beloved. People who talk a lot often make a lot of mistakes. And at the end, they're nothing. It's just hot air. Nothing comes to fruition. Let your yes be yes. And when Christ said, let your yes be yes, mean the yes that you say is the yes in the heart. Many people say yes, but inside here they say, no, no, this is very bad, this is a bad, I, I don't like this, I don't like this person. But you see them, they hug you, they kiss you, they love you, they show your affection, they're very wicked. 
But Christ wants us to be transparent. What's on the outside is on the inside. If it is yes here, yes out. If it is no here, then no it comes. So we talked about Abimelech, we talked about, and we learned things about him and from him. We talked about his brother Jotham, how he avoided evil, didn't resist evil, how he defended himself nicely with a parable, and how he ran away to avoid evil. But then we talked about this guy that's all talk and no action. And last but not least, we come to this man called Zebul. Zebul. Zebul was the governor or the mayor of Shechem. And as you know, he was friends with both of them. He wanted to be, as, as we heard, he wanted to be the double agent. Double O seven, double agent. He would be friends here and friends here. And some of us do that. They try to friend these people and try to friend them. Have your opinion. If what these people are saying is wrong, just say, I don't agree. I love you, but I don't agree with what you do. I accept you, but I don't approve of what you do. Don't be politically correct. Although the world teaches to be politically correct, there are certain situations that Christians have to be black and white. Don't stand on the fence. We say this is right and this is wrong. Even if we incur problems, even if we incur losses of income, even if we incur that friends will leave us, it's okay as long as we say God's way is this and this is the way I follow. Zebo wanted to be with both of them. And we know the story, right? You see, he told Abimelech, why don't you wait for Gal and his people coming out from the city and you wait for them over on the, on the mountains and then your soldiers will come and attack from both sides. And Abimelech listened to him because he was his friend. And to the point that, you know, here we see this picture showing Gal looking up on the mountain and telling Zebo, you know what, I see something up there, I see some enemy coming. And he tells him, no, don't worry, this is just shadows of the tree. You see how treacherous he was, how wicked he was. And eventually they both, you know, had altercations. I don't want to go through the story one more time, but you know, this said and he said and he said and he said. And eventually, Gal was destroyed. And Abimelech was in power. So Abimelech was in power, but the people of Shechem were against him. That's the spirit that God stirred, that spirit of animosity. And here we see cruelty. Abimelech went to all the city of Shechem and destroyed all of it. You see how anger and bitterness and ruthfulness this guy was. Abimelech attacked all the city of Shechem and the Bible says and killed all its people. And there's an expression here which nobody dared to ask me. The Bible says then Abimelech destroyed Shechem and scattered salt over it. And when you read that, you say, well, what does that mean, scattered salt? Did you really scatter salt? But really, it's an expression at that time that the city was completely ruined. It was brought down. It will not recover ever again. And some of the people escaped from that city. They escaped and they ran to another side neighboring village that had a temple. And the temple had a tower in it. And they went inside the tower. But this Abimelech went after them. Abimelech took his people and cut some branches, branches from the thorn bush. You know, that reminds me of the story of the thorn bushes. And he set it on fire with the people inside. So all the people in the tower of Shechem and that city, everybody died. The Bible gives us a number. About a thousand men and women also died. All this Lust for power, lust for position, lust for status. He killed everyone. He killed the people of Shechem, all of them. He killed his own brothers. You see how evil can blind you to do evil things. 
And then he went to this other city and inside the stronghold he burned the people. And then there was another tiny city beside Shechem. You see, he wanted to rule everywhere in Israel. And he went to that little city and the people were afraid and they had their own little tower and they went up into that little tower. But the Bible tells us something very strange. In that little city, in that little city, Abimelech went to its tower and stormed it. And in a verse, the Bible tells us what happened. But as he approached the entrance to the, to the tower, because he again wanted to set it on fire. This guy loves fire. And that's what his brother said in his oracle. The Bible says that the woman, as you see in that picture, dropped an upper millstone on his head and cracked his head. You know, millstone was where they grind wheat and it had two, two bricks or two parts. You know, one part at the bottom that would not move. And then they put the grain and then the top at the part at the top was rounded and it would move. So it would grind the wheat. So you can see her here in the picture holding just the top part. A woman, a woman, uh, just any woman. We don't even know her name. And she took that millstone and dropped it on his head. Good job. I don't know how she did it, but she did it. And you can see it even clearer in this picture. See here it falls on Abimelech's head. And I think that was the hand of God. How could a woman lift a millstone? This is impossible. It's like a huge brick. Who gave her that strength? And even if you lift it up and you drop it, would it really fall on Abimelech? It did. That's the hand of God, the miraculous hand of God that people say, oh, you know, I was strong, I was good, it's good luck, it's my, my talent. No, it is the hand of God moving things and breaking Abimelech's head. But the Bible then tells us Abimelech quickly called his servant and he told him, draw your sword and kill me. So that people will not say a woman had killed me. He was so concerned about his name and reputation to even on his deathbed. I know people that refuse to accept God even on their deathbed. But to the very last minute they would say no. No, my dignity, my pride. What will my people say? And here you see in the picture he's telling his servant, kill me with the sword. And yes, so the servant took the sword and ran it through Abimelech and Abimelech died. That reminds me of this verse where Jesus told his disciples, Peter specifically, all who kill by the sword will die by the sword. See this guy, this ruthless guy, killed his 70 brothers with his sword. Guess what? It's gonna come. You and I and all of us have to be careful. Sometimes we kill people, not with the sword. Sometimes we have a sword right here. Tongue. That sword can come out and slash people in the neck with ugly words, difficult words. Be careful how you use your sword that God gave you, your tongue. Be careful. And the chapter ends, and so did I, with this verse. And this is the summary. And if you forget everything I said today, this is what you should remember. God, what's that word? Repay. God has not forgotten. God has not and will not and should not and will never forget the hurt and the badness that happened in your life. And to his church and to his saints and to his mar martyrs all over the world. God repaid the wickedness of, you can put any name instead of Abimelech, it will happen. That he had done to his father by murdering his 70 brothers. God, heaven sees, heaven knows, heaven realizes. God also made the people of Shechem also pay for their wickedness. You see how God uses things, the same thing. The king 
was killed by the people and the king killed most of the people. Both were wrong and God was just. Don't take revenge. God will take your revenge for you. The Bible teaches it is mine to avenge. God says, I will repay. Don't repay. I will repay. Don't ever go after evil people. Do not, I caution you, the lesson I learned from here, don't repay evil with evil. And in due time, God will take care of it. I will end with this slide, which is a summary. I won't say me, I say you will read what you saw. If you saw goodness, it will come back to you goodness. It may not come back today, it may not come back next month, it may not come back next year. Believe me, sometimes it will not come back in your lifetime. You will do goodness and you won't see the fruits of it in your lifetime. But it will come to the people after you, to your family, to your children. And even if you don't see the goodness of the good you do here, you will see it up in heaven. Believe it, it will happen. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. Abimelech, you cannot mock God. You cannot kill people and get away with it. It will not happen. A man reaps what he sows. These are the words of Galatians. Whoever saw to please the flesh, from the flesh you will reap destruction. But whoever saws to please the Spirit, from the Spirit you will reap eternal life. Flesh and Spirit. They fight together. Flesh and Spirit. Always fighting. Always fighting together. And that is the spiritual war we talk about. You know who will win? It is the one you feed. If you feed the flesh all the time, lusts of the eye, pleasures of the world, feeding and taking care of your body and yourself and, and, and luxury, then that's going to overcome your spirit. But if you always feed the spirit, you're fasting, you're praying, you're reading your word, you're loving God, you're on your knees. And if you feed your spirit, the spirit will win. Which will it be? Hosanna Bible Study Group meets every Friday, 7.30 p.m. till 9.30 p.m. at SMSV Church, 3300 Highway 7 East Markham. The website is hosannabiblestudy.com where you can sign up for weekly emails and you will get emails about the upcoming lecture and the questions and everything else.